But let me start by, you know, just giving a short introduction about myself. Um, and let me know if you don't hear me because I believe the line is a bit uh, poor right now. But um, I'm honored to be here. I'm glad to see so many students. I, I'm uh, one of those who actually praise uh, students to go to school. Um, you know, I'm uh, 31 years old. Um, I'm born and raised in Sweden. My family moved to Sweden uh, in 84. So I was born in 84. Uh, my background is computer science. So I studied at the university here in Stockholm, Sweden. Um, I studied network engineering. So I'm basically a network engineer with uh, security as kind of a direction. Um, so I, I focused a lot on Linux and Windows environments. So that's kind of my core or was rather till I realized that um, crawling on the floor and, and pulling cables wasn't really the thing I wanted to do uh, when I grew up. So I decided to shift from network engineering to actually coding and programming. Um, I got my first computer when I was 10 years old. So that's kind of where my journey started to learn more about technology. Um, my mother bought me an IBM PS2, a 386 processor back in the days. So that was, that was really fun playing with Windows and deleting folders so that the computer would never boot up again. But you know, you break and you learn things. Um, I met my co-founder uh, when I was 18 here at the university. So we, we, uh, we always had this uh, great idea to start a company together someday. But we didn't call it company. We, we rather called it, uh, you know, this environment where we love to have fun. And uh, looking at other companies, we were thinking like, whatever they do that we don't like, we want to do the opposite and, and have basically fun in the office and, and work with the things that we think might uh, be helpful to people that make, might change their daily life. So after the university, we both started to work in different companies as developers. And uh, we, we both received a lot of phone calls from different parts of the world within our jobs. And we, we kind of realized that the one communication channel that everyone uses, which is phone calls, is missing a very important part. And that is the identity part. Uh, if you send an email to someone, the person will get your email address uh, and they will be able to figure out who you are based on the domain name and so forth. I mean, when, when, when um, humans designed the internet back in the days, they said, hey, let's not go with IP addresses because people won't be able to remember them. Let's come up with something called DNS. So, you know, you type google.com and you get to the Google's IP address. That never happened to, to phone numbers and, and phone communication. And we wanted to fix that. We wanted to create a trusted identity across phone communication. And it, it was a very simple idea, just giving you more information about those you communicate with. Um, and since then, I mean, the, the, the company obviously has, uh, we've had a lot of luck and, and uh, hit some great growth uh, metrics around the world. But it's also been, uh, a lot of ups and downs during this journey, which I think is important for everyone to know. It's, it's very easy to look at the company and say, hey, yes, you know, they just started and they are super successful. But the fact is we've been doing this for the last six years. Um, we, we also had this uh, philosophy that if we build something that people love and if we solve a problem that people have, then everything should be great. And we never... We never tried to be, sometimes we did try, but we never tried to be someone we weren't, meaning everyone was trying to become big in the US or become big in Western, in Europe. We said we want to grow and we want to put our focus where the consumers are, where the need is. And India was one of those markets that really took off uh, early on in 2012 and 11. And I think it was also because we wanted to make TrueCall available for everyone. And back then, uh, people were still using Symbian phones uh, in many parts of the world, especially in India. And uh, all the other developers and companies wanted to focus on Android and, and uh, iPhone. And we said, we want to focus on every platform. We want to be everywhere. And, and that kind of sparked the whole, I would, I would call it the viral growth, 
when we were available on every platform. And eventually when people moved from Symbian to Android, um, the first app they downloaded was Truecaller because it made their communication safer and, and more efficient. Um, so we always went where we think the consumers are. Now you can imagine a few years ago trying to be the next big company uh, by focusing on India, Middle East, Africa. No one wanted to invest in a company like that. And obviously today it's the total difference, Every, the total opposite. Everyone wants to invest or bet on the next company that goes big in, in especially in India, uh, where the potential is. So, you, you know, I think we, we definitely, looking back, we definitely did the right thing by listening to our users and and wanted to solve the problem where the need was organically and not spend a bunch of money trying to grow in a market where it just takes time. And I think in the end, every great product can only become successful if you solve a problem and if you have organic growth, uh, meaning that users download your app because someone told them to get it, your friend told you. And I'm sure, you know, I spent many, many, um, hours in India meeting our teams, but also a lot of users. Every time I go fly down to India, I, I go to people's homes and talk to users. And it's always the same thing. Uh, when I ask them, how did you hear about Truco? Yeah, a friend told me that, call me and I will show you something magical. And that's how it started. So, you know, it's been a lot of ups and downs. Uh, right now we're doing really well. Uh, I think also one of the key learnings uh, for us has been We've always had this as a culture in this company that whatever we do should always be for the best of the users. Meaning that in order to gain trust, you must be honest and you must do what you feel is comfortable. So everything we do in this company, we should be able to stand in front of a camera and say, yes, we do this. And if we can't do that, then we shouldn't do it. And I think that philosophy is really important for, for anything you build, to be honest. Um, and, you know, during a journey like this and probably every single successful journey, during these ups and downs, you will have, you know, there will be a lot of frictions, people not believing you. Um, but you have to take this friction and you who are engineers, you understand that energy doesn't disappear. It actually converts, right? So the friction, you have to convert it into positive energy that just drives you forward. Um, and I think back in the days when, when we started at the university, this was 2003 to 2006, we felt very stressed that we missed the train. We said that the web era is almost over and we missed it because we were in school. Um, but that's not really true. I, I don't think you will miss out on anything. I think it's important to finish your degree and make sure you learn how to work, work hard in school. Then you will learn how to work hard in, in, you know, in life too. And uh, the next train will come. And who knows, maybe you will be one of those who actually build the next platform. If it's not mobile right now, maybe it will be, or it's mobile now, but maybe in the future it will be something else. So there will always be a next train. That's, uh, that's for sure. Yeah, I guess that's uh, sort of my, my short intro uh, about our journey so far. And uh, it's been a tremendous journey. We, um, we're a team of 80 people right now, um, majority being here in Stockholm, Sweden. We have a team of uh, 10 people in, uh, in Delhi, and we have a small team in San Francisco. And um, yeah, that's, that's the company basically. We're trying to be global and be where our customers are too.